Hey booktube, Chelsea's Reads here. So as I said before, I'm kind of changing how I'm doing things um, when I do them. Um, it was just too overwhelming to try to do monthlies or weeklies or anything, so I'm just going to make videos um, when I feel like it. <laughs> and I'm thinking I'm going to do more like when I finish a series or finish some sort of group of books that we can chat about that way. So I did a fun little experiment, and by fun I mean not really fun in the end, and I decided as an adult, I am 29 years old, I decided I was going to reread a beloved children's series. This time around I read the Banicula series. There are seven books in this series. Most people remember the first book, which is Banicula. So let's talk about what this was like reading this children's series as an adult. Um, so as I said, book one is called Banicula. It's a rabbit tale of mystery. It's written by James and Deborah Howe. They were a married couple at the time, and they used to just sit around at their kitchen table and they kind of just told this story for fun. Um, and unfortunately, Deborah died before it was published. Um, her husband, James, ended up um, continuing the series after she died. So the premise of the book is that the Moore family, or is it Monroe? I already forgot their last names. So the Monroe family goes to the theater and they find this bunny and they bring it home. They do have a dog and a cat, Chester and um, Harold at home. Harold, the dog, is actually the one telling the story. Um, the prologue is him dropping it off to the editor of this book. Um, so that's a thing. And Chester the cat is convinced this vampire, this bunny is a vampire, Banicula. Actually, the family was seeing Dracula at the theater when they found this bunny. Um, the vegetables all lose their color, turn white. Um, and Chester, being a cat, doesn't really understand English, um, so has a bunch of comedy of errors, um, steak through the heart. He thinks it's the meat steak um, and tries to kill Benicula that way, but Harold decides Benicula's his friend and saves him, and then they decide to coexist. Um, so this is really fun. I think uh, I do remember reading it as a kid and really liking it, um, and this cover's terrifying. Um, I think this recently went through its 25th or 30th. It went through some anniversary, and it's a really cool cover um, on the uh, anniversary edition that I do kind of want to pick up, uh, rereading the series, although I still, like, I got about halfway through the series, and I'm like, what am I doing? I'm almost 30 years old. Why am I reading this literal children's series? It's not even YA. This is for children. Um, I do think this is a fun book to read out loud to your children, um, but I don't really recommend picking it up again. Um, as you can see, it's pretty short. Um, I think it's less than 200. It's not even 100 pages long. Um, I, or maybe it's exactly 100 pages long. 98 pages long. So it's not a very long story. Um, it's definitely fun if you read it out loud so you can do different voices and kind of get into it. Um, but the series continues on to book two, which is the Holiday Inn. Actually, this book is a little bit longer um, one of the longer of the ser in the series, um, and this one, Benicula isn't even in this one, um, there's Harold and Chester. They fit the Monroes are off on vacation, so they bring them into a pet boarding house, um, and they hear howling. <laughs> they think the Dash Hounds are part werewolf, and they're trying to solve this werewolf mystery, and it did get a little bit dark in this one, a little bit creepier. Um, it was kind of fun. Um, there really wasn't any need for it to be as long as it was. Like I said, the other one was just under 100 pages, and this one is 195, so it's about 100 pages longer than the first one. Um, and not much ha happens. The mystery um, was pretty dark um, and interesting, and I just think, again, kids would like it. It's a really fun one to read out loud, I believe, but um, as an adult, it really didn't. Uh, hold my interest too much. Um, but then the series continued to the celery stalks at midnight. Um, and now they did pick up a puppy, Howie. So we have Harold, Chester, and Howie. Howie is a dash hound puppy. So they are back at home in this one. And the vegetables in the neighborhood are mysteriously turning white. Benicula has gone missing. So the family Monroe pets are on the move to go try to find him. This is another one I do remember reading as a kid. I think this is the last one I read as a kid. There was a big jump. Um, and I don't remember which one. But there was like... 
eight years between two of the books and then an even bigger span of time um to the next one so at this point it's just James Howe um because his wife has passed on at this point writing these books um but again to be the Beniculus series um and Beniculus hardly even in it so again this one's they're running around trying to save the vegetables um they're worried the vegetables are going to come back to life so they take toothpicks and they're picking all the vegetables that have been turned white um, it's another really silly one. I think this is the funniest out of all of them. Um, Howie is, as a puppy, is really naive, and he adds a lot of the comedic value. Um, but their story does continue in Nighty Nightmare. This one, the Monroes decide to go on a camping trip, and they bring their pets with them this time. They meet up with a bulldog um, and two kind of creepier characters. This was another one that um, actually kind of had me like, stupidly believing all the red herrings and stuff, um, because the Monroes come up upon two creepy gentlemen, uh, they go missing at one point, um, and then they're, the animals are actually telling scary stories, trying to scare each other, and they come up with the origin story for Benicula, um, and how he was created by a vampire, and this vampire family adopted these kids, and blah blah blah, it was, like, the origin story for Benicula, and it was actually kind of cute, um, and I did like this one, but this is at the point that I think I was like, why am I reading these? It was either this one or the next one that I started asking myself why I picked up this experiment. But by this point, I was invested in it, so I kept going with it. It's another rather short one. Um, so the next book is Return to the Holiday Inn, um, much as the title suggests. This is the one I know I got sick of. I did not enjoy this one very much. So the Monroes go on vacation once more, um, and their pets all go to the Holiday Inn, not including Benicula. Benicula goes to a neighbor. And, yeah. So this one actually got me as well. As you can see, there's a little bit more, a couple more characters in there, including a great dame that I don't remember his name. And it doesn't look like his name's on the back. Oh, yeah, it's, it's Hamlet. Um, Hamlet was owned by an older gentleman who was a Shakespeare actor, um, Shakespearean actor, and he believes he's been left behind for good. And at one point, I honestly, again, believed the misdirection and thought they were going to um, end up putting Hamlet down because he has arthritis. He's a little old. Um, there was some really weird, stupid stuff with um, a parrot, some ventriloquism that was just, like, really out there and ridiculous plot. But again, this is made for children, and here I am as an adult reading this. Um, it is another really thick one. The Holiday Inn books are the longest. Um, and this one is 156 pages, so again, it's not as long as the other ones. Uh, is the second one, but it still felt really long, and uh, the mystery in this one kind of dragged on, but it was more of a mystery story, and it was kind of fun. Um, next, and this was the originally originally intended for the ending. This is Benicula Strikes Again. So in this one, the theater that um, the Monroes found Benicula is going to be torn down. So Benicula um, actually runs away, and Harold... Um, is convinced that it's because Benicula wants to find his mother and he doesn't feel like he belongs. He's actually depressed. He wasn't eating. And um, they just think it's because he he doesn't understand his origin. He wants to find his mom. Um, and again, they're going to tear this building down because it's condemned and all that stuff. And Chester's actually the one who sacrifices himself to save Benicula. And it was actually a really interesting um, kind of morally ambiguous plot throughout this one because Chester was like, whatever, he can die. And it was kind of like dark for like, a kid's book. But um, Harold convinces him otherwise. And Benicula strikes again, so he's here to live another day. And then finally, and this was, um, there was a big gap between some of those books. Uh, like it took a couple years. Um, at this point, actually, if you read, start, I started reading the bios in the back at some point. Um, um, James Howe got married to a man. So that was kind of cool. And then this is the final book in this story, is Benicula meets Edgar Allan Crow. Edgar Allan Crow is a crow. Um, he is the muse of author M.T. Graves in this. And this is, this book was so weird. Um, so basically the Monroe boys... Um, had a contest at school where you could write about your favorite author, and then actually um, the one boy wins a contest for M.T. Graves, which is um, a very obvious ripoff of R.L. Stein in the Goosebumps series. He writes um, The Flesh Crawlers. 
Um, so he wins a chance to get Edgar Allan Crow and M.T. Graves to come visit their school. And I, I need to find an illustration because, yes, there are pictures in these books. Um, the the M.T. Graves in here looks like a caricature of Adam Driver, and I live for it. Um, this book, here it is. We got to appreciate uh, Rip Off Adam Driver here. Look at that. Rip Off Adam Driver. Merp. Um, so this book is really goofy, and I kind of really hated this one. Um, it really wasn't worth the reading or picking up, but, uh, M.T. Graves is socially awkward, probably has autism, which is fine, kind of, um, it's just portrayed very oddly in this, and it was, it, they never said he had autism, it's just, um, that's the field I work in, so I kind of picked up on those cues. But for someone who does public appearances all the time, he really didn't act like he did. It was very odd. They have this, like, shoehorned romance between him and the librarian that it was last minute. Um, he has this briefcase the entire time that he doesn't want anyone to open and he makes it really secretive. And um, inside is actually a bunch of stuffed animals. And what really made me mad was, like, the one of the Monroe kids, one of the sons, was like, yeah, you can just keep Benicula because he really liked him and, you know, he was soft and he liked soft things. Um, so the Monroe kids are like, yeah, take him, whatever, it's fine. And they're like, what? No. Um, even Chester was like, oh my god, we gotta protect our, protect our Benicula. Um, oh yeah, because Chester and Harold all thought, uh, M.T. Graves was gonna turn Benicula into an appliance, because that's what happens in his books, is the monsters get turned into appliances. And I think he had, like, a phobia of rabbits, or he had a phobia of something, and Benicula was helping him get over it. And, uh, M.T. Crow goes and leave, or, uh, Edgar Allan Crow goes and leaves empty graves to join like actual crows because he's not needed anymore it was ridiculous um but it's also revealed that the neighbor the obnoxious neighbor kid that kind of like forces himself into this book um helped mate Benicula for a science experiment so he gives one of Benicula's babies to empty graves yeah because that's a thing I don't know. So it was ridiculous. Um, and then that was the entire series. Um, but Nicola has grown past these seven books into something, um, just wild. Um, so there's a bunch of spinoffs. There's like for younger kids, like Howie, the dog writes, um, like tales from the tree house or something, but he has his own like stories because he was so, Impre like a canon version is because he was so impressed with empty graves and he was like crazy about him that he decided to become an author himself because again these were told through Harold from Harold so his uncle Harold inspired Howie to be an author so he comes up with his own books that are um have nothing to do with Benicula or the dogs they're just like literally like anthology stories I believe um and then there's also tales of Benicula and those are or, like, something like that. I don't know. There's, like, even younger books for kids. Um, like, those step-into-reading, leveled reading books. Um, there's those two. But, you know, Benicula is always going to be a classic. That vampire bunny that sucks the life out of vegetables. So, like I said, this was a interesting experiment. As an adult, I don't recommend picking them up unless you have children or you're going to read them with your kids. They're really funny. Um, they're not scary at all, other than this really memorable cover. Um, but it was an interesting experiment. I don't regret doing it, but I also um, would not recommend anybody else try it. <laughs> um, but I, if you've never picked this up, like I said, if you have um, a child in your life, a son, daughter, niece, nephew, grandchild it's the, these are the perfect books to read out loud um to do goofy voices and fun stuff with and like i said they're fun innocent stories they're just not made for adults so we will see you guys soon next uh, video i think i'm gonna make is um an update on my reread of the pink carnation series and yeah i think that's all i have planned for right now and we'll see you guys when i have more to talk about thanks for watching